I'll play, please. Um, a welcome for Claude Anschein and Wiebke. Um, I'm a fully ordained Zen Buddhist monk. I am one of the first ordained in one of the first all Western Buddhist orders, or so I'm told sometimes. It depends on the source. Um, whenever I uh, introduce this notion, someone always comes up and says, oh, but there's another Western Buddhist order. Or they say, well, wasn't this person ordained before you? And I go, well, it's possible. What does it matter? I'm invited to talk about spiritual realities. What is spirituality? If we know, or think we know, that's probably not spirituality. You see, there is no fixed point. There's nothing to attach to, nothing. And the moment we think we know, then we are filled with concepts and ideas which prevent us from experiencing spirituality. The spiritual reality of life. I talk from the perspective of the Buddha's teaching. Not from Buddhism, but from the Buddha's teaching. Because, of course, in Buddhism, like in any, when any school develops, there are many interpretations of the founding teacher's teaching. And, of course, everyone claims to know exactly what the teacher meant. Everyone claims to know the way. There, there isn't any one way. This is what the Buddha taught. No one way. We have to find our way. The teaching is not meant to be uh, something held rigidly. It's not a fixed point. The teaching is a guide, really a guide to help us to wake up. What does it mean to wake up? To wake up in a in, in the in a Buddhist understanding, it's not just Buddhist, but this is the language that I use. To wake up is to become aware of those points that keep us from waking up. Uh, the nature of our resistance. The moment that I look at someone and I look at them as different from me, I perceive them as different from me or that I am different from them. The moment I create this separation, this is not spiritual practice. To become aware that this is happening is spiritual practice. Spirituality. There isn't a spiritual part of life. Life is in fact a spiritual reality. Um, people, um, sometimes people will come and ask to study with me um, because perhaps they're interested or um, uh, stimulated in some way. And when people come, they have expectations of what they're coming to. Most of them, when they arrive, are, are quite disappointed because the reality they experience doesn't measure up to the expectations. And so then, of course, I'm held responsible because I didn't satisfy their expectations and, of course, they know what spiritual practice is. When people come to me, what I teach, actually, I don't teach any. I can't teach anything. I don't really teach anything. What I do is I live life, really fully, as fully as possible, so that I make every moment a, a moment of spiritual practice.